Hello. Um, okay, homework, holiday homework. Your kids, uh, the average child attending a school, um, either in the government system or the private sector, is probably used to a certain amount of homework every day. And then when it's holiday time and the holidays roll around and uh, the school finishes, then teachers then distribute holiday homework to the students. I'm going to read you a letter that I wrote to my child's teacher when she was in primary school. And I would, I would extend this letter to anyone else reading it, even after primary school, secondary school, middle school, high school even. Okay, here it is, you ready? Okay. Dear teachers, we did not touch any of the, hol the holiday homework. We mean no disrespect by this. My belief is that school time is for schoolwork and holidays should be holidays. A chance to take a break, unwind and allow the kids a chance to structure and self-direct their own free time on their own. Holidays should not be another excuse to load kids with work just to keep them busy. It is essentially stealing their free time, which is very precious little actually these days, and stealing large portions of their childhood. Large portions of their childhood. Their days at school are already so long and it's enough with the homework overkill already. I understand that the purpose of the homework was for exam review. If my child does badly on the exams due to her skipping the homework, I take full responsibility and I'm totally okay with that. Have a lovely day now. And that's the letter. I'm going to add that maybe you think the homework is necessary in terms of review to, to keep and reiterate and um, impression on their minds the concepts that they've, that they've learned in school. I'll, I'll just uh, add here that I'm a teacher myself and I've been teaching for over 15 years and I've thought this ever since the beginning. The fact that we give homework as it is With such impunity, we don't even really think that the, the education and uh, education system and the teachers don't, even, don't well, I'm going to say most, most, not all, don't really think much of dealing out homework, dealing out spans of homework that takes up inordinate amounts of time after school. Homework, assignments, projects, exams, etc. All of this, all of this implies that the school system and the schools, in an unsaid agreement, unspoken agreement, ostensibly own our children's free time. They own our children's time. We do not direct what happens to our kids and their time. The school has priority over that. Is that true? Is that how we want it? Is that how it's benefiting our children? Does the school system know beyond a shadow of a doubt that what they're insisting that the kids are doing in their free time, all the homework, all the assignments, all the essays, etc. Does the, does the education system, does the school, do the teachers and do the universities definitively know that all this extra work that the kids are doing is 
certainly going to benefit them in their future. Do all these are they all these institutions absolutely sure of that? They're not. They can't be. Nobody knows the future, especially now. Everything is so tumultuous right now. The th things are changing, industries are changing, education is changing. The scope, the landscape, the terrain of the world is changing. What's happening to the population of all countries is changing even. Jobs are changing. Everything is in flux. There's no way anyone really can know right now what is going to benefit the kids in the future. So to foist and force them to do endless tons of paperwork, busy work, rote learning, etc. How do we know it's going to stand them in good stead? We have no idea. Not really. No one right now has any clue. And if they are making out like they definitively do know. I mean, you can have a guess, you can have a, a general guess, but the way things and institutions, schools are marketed, you come across, they come across as very certain of what your child needs. Please remember at the, at the end of the day, most of these institutions are businesses money is the number one priority, the foremost motivation for what they're doing. Can't really blame them for that in this world where, you know, we all need money and to make a business, okay, education is one. And never forget that. Their income, their shares or whatever, that means more. That, that, that's why they're doing it. It's not for the good and it's not for the furthering. It's not for the thriving of our kids, actually, because once our children leave their institutes, leave their schools, leave their systems, they wash their hands a little bit and they don't look back. They don't look at that kid again. That kid's not supposed to look back on them again. There's another thing. You know how us humans, once we leave school and once we leave university or college and we enter the job, the workforce, and we start our jobs or our careers or whatever it is, it is a very, very lucky few of us that enter professions where we are guaranteed a stable and a sufficient or generous income and we are afforded sufficient, or, um, I, want to look, I want a better word than sufficient, um, a, a goodly amount of free time to pursue our own interests. Once we leave school and once we enter the workforce, what other time in our lives do we ever have spans of free time like we did when we were kids? The average person, I'm not talking about those who hit the, the luck location, work contacts and uh, expertise lottery and are able to enter a, a career w which affords them a great life. I'm talking about the majority of the earth, the majority of the humans of the earth. Once they've left their educational institutes and their uh, institutions, the chances that they ever get three weeks, three weeks in one particular period where they are not obligated or not um, expected to perform in a certain way, or to get up at a certain time, or to, you, you know, uh, produce a certain thing. When again in a person's human life do they have large portions of time that they can actually self-direct without, without worrying about the impact, or without worrying about the repercussions of wasting time, or just playing around with something that may or may not work? or experimenting with something, or trying something new. We don't. As humans on this earth, we don't have that. Children have a childhood and free time from school when they're in primary school, middle school, some parts of high school. They have the weekends, they have the holidays, or winter holidays, or um, 
spring break or um, Chinese New Year and so on and so forth. They have these breaks. This, these breaks that they have are precious, so precious. They have spans of time where they're not required to wake up at the sound of an alarm or a clock or someone waking them up to hurry them up. That time is, can potentially be very unhurried, waking up on their own steam, learning their own habits, learning about themselves. My child, she spends a lot of time drawing and journaling and exploring the internet. Uh, she's on YouTube. Yes, she's on TikTok. She play, get, plays games. Recently, she's on Reddit. Is that a bad thing? I don't know that it is. So much of this time is so precious because it can be used for their own self-directed inclinations, self-directed leanings. They have this time to explore these slightly different paths from what is uh, proposed at school. This time is so precious. Yes, they do get bored, but there's even a place for boredom. There's a place for laziness, there's a place for boredom. Because at a certain point, a child is going to probably, I don't know, be playing games until 4 a.m. until their eyes start to bleed. But at a certain point, they're going to go, there must be something else that I should be doing. They're going to themselves get to a stage where they're like, walk around, be bored, see what else. And that feeling of, that restless feeling of uh, not doing anything constructive, they know themselves, they feel a certain sense of guilt, and that in itself can steer them towards looking around, actively looking around for what should they be doing? Oh, maybe I need to get, get on with a bit of homework, or maybe I need to get on, help my mom, or my dad, or I don't know, I need to learn how to use that program because that could be useful, or I need to learn this skill or that skill, or let me go outside and see my friends. This time is, is so, so precious, and they have it for, if you think in the whole course of our lives, they, children and teenagers have these periods of time for their own self-directed growth and experimentation for such a short period of their lives, maximum 15 years. That, I think that's quite lucky. Maximum 15 years. And then after that, after school, after college, after university, we don't get that again, right? I think teachers are quite lucky. Teachers kind of get the same breaks at, that the students have. And maybe some freelancers, people that work from home or people that travel. But these positions are, are quite, I feel people who have these positions are, are quite fortunate. And But... If you look in comparison at the rest of the earth, if you, if you take the whole of the humans on the earth into account, how many people are afforded that lifestyle or, or, or can get to that or are given the resources to be even begin considering getting to that? It, it's not common. It's the exception to the rule, actually. Think of India. Think of Africa. Think of cities in America. Think of the Americas, Europe, Eastern Europe, China, everywhere, Russia. Not everyone's okay. Not everyone has a job. If they do have a job, they barely rest. So this is the thing. Kids, for the first 15 years of their lives, school assumes, school, the schools assume that they own the child's time. I think as parents, we need to reassess how true we're going to make that be. How, how true are we going to allow that to manifest as? Because there are kids. They were not born to the schools. They were not born to the education system. They were born to us. We decide. Do the schools and the education system own their time? Hold up. Think of it, right? Eight hours, eight hours a day five days a week at school. They're expected to sit down for 40 to 45, maybe 50 minutes, full concentration, and then get up and move and sit down again for another period or subject and do the same thing. Maybe eight periods a day, seven periods a day. Can we, as adults, maintain that level of concentration for that long? 
Be realistic. Be honest. Can we? Can you do that? I mean, if you think of it, if you go and what now going to the movies, that's something you're supposed to enjoy, right? You and your friends go to watch a movie and the movies may be two and a half hours long. Maybe it's three hours. People walk out of that cinema and go, whoa, that movie was long, man. I was falling asleep at the end. That's three hours. That's three hours. But we expect children who are growing and have hormones buzzing around their body and are growing and their bodies are expanding and turning into different things and have all this excess energy. We expect them to sit in one place periodically for eight hours a day and just focus and listen and to be able to do that. That's already happening for eight hours a day. But then we expect them to go and play a bit of sport and then get, get back to more studying later in the evening. I'm guessing the average person is thinking two hours homework or something, right? And that's all just on unspoken agreement. All of this is on unspoken agreement. The, the, the school is just assuming a massive assumption that this is all just fine with you and your child. You're all going to be doing this work, whether it's solid learning work or busy work, and then you're going to bring it back. And hopefully somebody at some stage is going to check it or mark it often that I don't know how often that happens, but okay. I don't know how, how, I honestly don't know how much time the average teacher has to mark all of their students' homework every day if they already have to plan for that lesson and deal with what's in that lesson and the assignments for that lesson. And then there's homework too. I don't know how sustainable it is if you consider all things. So yes, basically, children, the education system assumes control of their time, their energy resources, after school, on weekends. I've never, oh, I've also never understood it. Why do you, it's the weekend. It's the weekend. Week, end. The week should end, right? We shouldn't be giving our children take home work for their weekends because that's their break. Let's keep it a break. It's better for their brains. They allow their own thought processes. If we're always constantly telling them what to think, how to think, when to think and what to do, by the time their frontal cortexes are fully formed, how will they know what to do when they do have their own free reign, when they do have their own free time, when they've been listening to someone else tell them what to do for most of the time before in their lives. How will they know? They've never had any practice because they haven't even had the times that were supposedly allocated as free weren't free they, because it was filled up with, with, with other things that other people told them was were good for their future but as it turned out later on, wasn't necessarily so. Because, I mean, any grown-up now can tell you that. Any, any grown-up, right? You probably know it too. Any grown-up now can tell you that. All that extra studying, all that extra learning in school, was it all instrumental to your success or to your survival at the moment? No. No, it wasn't. Part of it was, yeah, sure. But not all of it. Definitely not most of it. Yes, I mean, you can have amazing teachers. Yes, you can have amazing curriculums. But the school system needs to not assume so much of people's time. Many companies and em employers do not assume the same thing of their workers. I mean, if you think about it, the school system is inherently created to, uh, to benefit and to supply workers for it was the same system as in the industrial area, yeah, yeah, the industrial era, where they were providing workers for, for the different in industries. But that was all before. That was decades ago, decades and decades ago. And the thing is, those people, for that system before, it worked because what they learned was directly applicable to their industries and it worked. But these days, we have no idea where we're going. So why are we still foisting? Why are we still foisting this system 
and these activities on these kids, even in their free times. Of course, there's still, there, there, there's, there's still a place for school, there's still a place for public schools, there's still a place, and of, of course, schools are always relevant. But this expectation of ownership of all of their free time outside of school is ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. Don't, please do not feel obligated to sign your children, to sign your child, to ascribe to the system too. You are the only person standing between the education system and your child. You are the only person who's going to stand up for them and stand up for their rights and be a mouthpiece to say what they need and what they don't need. So stand up for them. You can, I will leave a copy of my letter down below. You can copy paste it should you need it. If you want to do the same thing for the teachers at your school or the institutions there. But I really feel that crowding up a child's time with prescribed activities, prescribed extra stuff all from school, there's no guarantee that it's going to help them. I wish you all the best with your child. I wish you all the best with your parenting. And if I can offer any more uh, help or advice, I'd say keep trusting your gut. Follow your gut. Trust, trust what you're seeing. Trust what you're noticing. Trust your own inclinations on things. So to finally uh, wrap this up, I'm just letting, know, letting you know what, what I've been doing with my child. I don't force her to do holiday homework. I don't force her to do weekend homework. I let the teachers know. I, I always tell them uh, my reasons. And I also tell them, please know that this is not personal. It is not a... I'm not attacking your profession and I'm not attacking the school and I mean no disrespect. But I am doing the best that I can for what I think is suitable for my child. And I do not think that the school uh, owns my child's time. Yes, I have, uh, I have paid tuition for my child to be there from 8 until 5. After that, no. The rest of the day is ours. Her weekends are ours and hers. And it's the same with the holidays. They have these, uh, they have this time for such a short period of, the, of their, their lives, such a short period of their growing years, their childhoods. Let's let them have it. Allow them to sleep late. Allow them to, to stay up. Allow them to spend endless hours with friends. Allow them lots of closed door time. Allow them journaling time, drawing time, playing games time, times where they're just, I don't know, staring up at the ceiling. All of this, it, it, it's theirs. Because never again will they have it. Well, I don't, maybe some of them can work out a living where they are able to have a fantastic life in the future with a, with a fantastic income and enough free time. But if you think of the earth as it is and humans as it is, not many of us all have that. We don't know the chances of our children in the future having that. We have no idea if our children in the future will have enough free time to process their own thoughts and um, play and experiment with things. We have no guarantee of that. So while we have them as children, while we have them as, as growing, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of them working out what they want to do with their own time, with the, with the small parts of the free time that they do have. It is not a train smash. It is not a disaster if they're bored at some point. When a child is bored, they are heading towards a moment where they go, hmm, maybe I'll try doing this thing or that thing. Maybe I'm going to play around with this thing and see what happens. It's not a bad thing. That's their own thought processes. That's their own initiative coming through. There's a, there's a big problem in the world where grown, grown adults 
because they were always told what to do when they were children. When they grow up, they have no idea what to do when they're free time or on their own initiative because they were never afforded or allowed the chance to do so before. So their brain patterns weren't um, laid down and they're just not used to even thinking that way. They don't even know where to start. So we need to allow children to, to build their own brain pathways, um, work on their own initiatives, come up with their own ideas about things and let them run with it for a while. The allocated time for downtime and free time, let it be that. Let it be. Let them have it. They have it for such a short amount of their lives anyway. Potentially after they leave school or leave university, it's gone until 50 years later where they get to, they get to retire. Lucky them. Do we want that for them?